everyone, and welcome to the 2017 Cloud Computing Conference. I'm here with Patrick Shenazon uh, from Docker Company. So welcome, Patrick, and welcome to the Cloud Computing Conference. Maybe you can just give a quick introduction uh, of yourself and what do you do at Docker? Sure. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, so I'm Patrick Shenazon. As you can hear from my accent, I'm a little bit French, uh, but I live in California. I've been in California for 12 years in San Francisco. Uh, at Docker, I'm the chief developer advocate. Uh, so that's the team that's responsible for growing a developer community around Docker. Uh, and Docker has been very successful with developers and with uh, operations people uh, in the past few years. That sounds like a very cool job, I think. Yeah. So um, now you're at a Cloud Computing Conference. Maybe you can give us an overview. What has been your favorite topic so far at the conference? Yeah, so easily uh, my favorite topic has been containers. Uh, before joining Docker, I used to be at Google and then at VMware and then at Microsoft. So I've been at several companies uh, who kick-started the cloud computing revolution. Uh, and right now, what's most exciting both for devs and ops uh, in the past four years have been that technology called containers. Uh, that Docker uh, really democratized four years ago when Solomon Hikes created the Docker open source project. And so today at Docker, the company, uh, we are still building the open source project and we also have uh, some commercial uh, offering for enterprises on top of that. Great. So I think for all the developers and entrepreneurs and everyone watching, maybe Patrick, can tell us a bit more about what are some of the trends you see in the industry? Yeah. So. Four years ago, when Solomon introduced the world to uh, containers, uh, developers starting to adopt them very quickly uh, as a way to build uh, what is called microservice applications. Uh, so applications where uh, you cut your application into a lot of small services that can be operated and scaled uh, independently. And so developers starting to adopt that. Uh, then there, there's another trend that, uh, uh, that developed at the same time that was called DevOps, mm -hmm. where devs and ops are working together as a team using the same tools. And Docker very often was that tool that they were using uh, to meet in the middle and work together. Uh, and, uh, and so we had microservices, DevOps. And, and right now what's happening uh, is enterprises in the past two years have started to adopt containers and what we're seeing at Docker is that the main use case they've been using that for uh, is what we call modernization of traditional applications. So enterprises want to move their applications to the cloud and in order to do that they start by containerizing them and then they, they uh, cre uh, create Docker images out yeah. of their applications. Yeah. They put that in a registry and then they can deploy them on premise uh, on an enterprise solution like a Docker Enterprise Edition, uh, or they can deploy them to the cloud. Great, that sounds super interesting. So we all know that Docker's new CEO, Steve Singh, he's made some uh, kind of great strategies about the company's new commercial offerings. I'd um, like to ask you a bit more about how does he want to expand in the enterprise market? Yeah, yeah, so Steve is coming from the enterprise market and it's really, uh, we're very lucky uh, that he joined Docker because uh, he has the experience in the enterprise market and in taking a company big. Uh, and the focus of Docker, so last year uh, we released uh, Docker Enterprise Edition and Docker Community Edition. Community Edition is based on the open source uh, mm -hmm. bits from Docker. Enterprise Edition is uh, our version for enterprises with uh, uh, role-based access control and a lot of things uh, in security that uh, enterprises need to deploy these containers in production. And the direction that Steve is taking the company is to focus on that use case that I was talking about mm. that we see a lot of our enterprise customers adopting containers for, which is modernization of traditional applications. Okay. And where does um, Alibaba Cloud fit into this? And what do you think Alibaba Cloud and Docker can achieve together? So uh, Alibaba Cloud and Docker is really a marriage made in heaven. Uh, very often enterprises, when they're uh, starting that move to the cloud, uh, they start by dockerizing applications, putting them on premise, uh, and then moving them to the cloud as containerized applications. And Alibaba happens to have both a solution for on-premise uh, as well as in the cloud. And so at Docker, we're the partner uh, with Alibaba for containers. Uh, so we have a very strong exclusive partnership uh, in China where 
If you want to get Docker Enterprise Edition, uh, you buy it from Alibaba. Great, so Docker on Alibaba Cloud only. And maybe you can tell us a bit more why you guys chose Alibaba Cloud? Oh, so we chose Alibaba Cloud because uh, it's the biggest uh, cloud computing platform in China. Mm -hmm. uh, and plus our teams really work together very well. Okay, what's been the most kind of uh, unexpected surprise or the most interesting aspect you've had with working with Alibaba Cloud so far? Uh, like the, the, the most interesting aspect mm. of uh, working with Alibaba Cloud was really to see Chinese enterprises uh, uh, who, who were involved with Alibaba starting to ask for Docker Enterprise Edition and seeing our commercial solutions start to make inroads in China. Awesome. Cool. So what do you think are some of the biggest challenges that enterprises may face when they are adopting a containerized service? Yeah, so one of the biggest challenges that enterprises meet uh, is really to take these existing applications that have been coded sometimes like 10 or 15 years ago. We see some very old applications. Uh, most enterprises, um, for, for, for most large enterprises, 80% of their IT budget is stuck into maintaining existing applications. Mm -hmm. And right now what's happening is that uh, uh, most of the IT departments of these uh, companies are asked to start to innovate. And so they only have these 20% of budget that's left for innovation. And so the big challenge they have is how do they innovate uh, with only 20% of their budget. And that modernization of traditional applications is the way they do that, where they start to containerize their application, move them on-premise on an on enterprise platform like Docker Enterprise Edition, or in the cloud like with uh, AliCloud, yeah. with Docker EE on top. Uh, and then uh, they can start uh, uh, seeing some reduction in cost uh, thanks to that. So at DockerCon last year, we had an example in the US uh, for MetLife, who explained the cost savings of up to 40% saving they got out of that. Okay. And that's their new budget for innovation. And once they've done that, these monolithic applications that they move to the cloud or on-prem, once containerized, they can start to add some value on top of it uh, in the form of microservices. Cool. So what are some of the new and innovative use cases uh, for the industry in terms of containers? Maybe you can tell us a bit more about that. Sure. So in addition to microservices and modernization of traditional apps, uh, some of the new use cases that we see happening is uh, a lot of companies are le leveraging artificial intelligence uh, or deep learning technologies like TensorFlow, for example. Mm. And these lend themselves really well to running in containers. So lots of people are using TensorFlow in containers. Uh, very often also uh, some of these applications are leveraging GPUs, so we see a, a, a lot of usage of uh, 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 Docker with GPUs. Awesome. And what are some of the latest trends you see in the industry as well? Where do you think it's going to head in terms of containerized services? So there, there, there are some interesting trends, for example, uh, in addition to artificial intelligence, uh, we see people uh, starting to build what is called serverless platforms. Mm -hmm. So these are platforms that typically run on top of a containerized platform like Docker Enterprise Edition that lets the developer focus on just writing a function that responds to events. Uh, and then it's a, a much easier way of building an application. So there are some solutions like uh, uh, OpenFast is one, uh, Oracle release one open source called FN. Uh, there's another one by IBM, which is an Apache project called OpenWhisk. Mm -hmm. And actually, uh, for people who are interested in that, uh, we'll have a panel about that at DockerCon uh, in a few weeks. Great, sounds awesome. And can you tell us a bit more about what are the key differentiating solutions or service offering that Docker provides for your clients? Yeah, so Docker is a very unique platform. Uh, so first, Docker started the containerization revolution. So for new applications that are built with a microservice architecture, Docker is the perfect solution. Uh, in addition to that, uh, uh, Docker also lends itself really well to that modernization aspect. Taking existing applications, you don't need to code anything, uh, you containerize them, there are some tools that let you do that. And Docker runs everywhere. That, that's one of, the, one of the things that the beauty of the platform, it runs on Windows and Linux. Uh, it runs in any cloud and on-premise, on bare metal. It runs on virtualization as well. Uh, it and that's quite runs, unique for the industry? And that's very unique. It, it's the only platform that runs on both Windows, Linux, okay. uh, mainframe, cloud, virtualization, okay. anywhere, anywhere. 
So enterprises very often have a very uh, heterogeneous uh, park of applications. Some of these apps are running on mainframe, some of these apps are running on Windows, some on old version of Windows, some on Linux and a very different type of flavors of Linux. And Docker is the only solution that runs on any of these platforms. Great. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, Patrick Chenazon. And uh, we hope to see you again and be where to watch more interviews at Alibaba International. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay.